Hey guys, I don't know if this is working, but I'm going to try. It seems like I'm getting a really bad reception today, um, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm Jessie Henry, and I have a fun little project today. I'm going to work on this still life over here of a martini glass with a cracked egg inside. Should be kind of fun. Um, I've done this before. It has a interesting, fun um, viscosity with the albumin, and um, anyway, just going to try to work on that. So, I'm really nervous. I don't think that we're getting any kind of cell reception, but I hope so. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to plow forward and see what happens. If I do lose cell reception, then um, just, you know, when it's all done, it'll just kind of, it'll work itself out. Anyway, oh, before I get going, I wanted to tell you, I just got this book in the mail. I know it's going to be backwards for you. This is a book, just came out, it's called The Figurative Artist Handbook. Just got it today. It is stunning, a gorgeous work of art. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Uh, by Rob Zeller. He is the founder of the Teaching Studios of Art. And um, this, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. You can get the book on Amazon and also at Barnes & Noble. Right now it's like $25, otherwise it's $40, $46, dollars cover price. But so. It's really worth getting. It is mostly figure and uh, portraits, but it's valuable, priceless information. Thanks for joining, guys. I did have some technical difficulties before. I was having trouble with the cell reception, so I kind of moved the camera back. So I'm hoping that it works. Anyway, keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, so in case you're just joining, I have my still life set up. I have a cocktail glass with a cracked egg inside. It should be kind of fun. I have a little uh, cobalt blue glass rooster. and. Um, Thanks. Anyway, so I'm going to do this. I have it sort of started already. I did um, just sort of a turpentine wash on, um, this is a 11 by 14 linen panel. Um, and then I have it finished here. I feel like it's like a cooking show. And here's the finished product today. So um, there it is. And you've seen it before because I've been sharing it. But, so what I'm gonna do is get going on this. Um, hey guys, this is my palette that I'm going to use today. I, I had you closer, but it seemed like it was messing with the cell reception, so I had to push the camera back, and hey, we're on, so we'll just leave it at that. So for colors today, I'm going to use, uh, I have my titanium white right here, and then I put on some extra colors that I don't normally use. Hi, Margo, good to see you. I have um, cadmium red light, cadmium medium, those two colors I don't normally use but I wanted them today because of my egg yolk. has that really cool yellow. Then I have my regular cadmium, cadmium yellow pale, um, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. I threw on a little bit of cobalt blue in case I decide to do that little chicken. And then um, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and um, phthalo green. Okay, so um, I am gonna jump in. I guess that that's all I have to say. I have my Gamsol out and my linseed oil. And just kind of getting in the zone. The egg that I have, I cracked this this morning, and this, of course, was already done. So I'm going to just go with what I have on here instead of that, and I'll just use that as reference. Um, all right. So and I probably won't be able to see your comments or questions very well, but I will get them when I'm done. So what do I do when I have this set up, and I chose to put these things um, in this place on the canvas because I felt that it was a nice enough um, distant relationship to the edges. In this one, this was my first um, setup of this. By the time I got to the finished one, I had moved this eggshell over a little bit, so I'm going to do that too. And then um, I like the size relationship and the pattern of this Y shape with these two objects. So that was kind of something I was thinking of, that echo of design. And this line points to this. And then when I get the yellow in here, it'll be a nice compliment. Even though purple is yellow's compliment, it's still kind of fun. Close enough. All right, so for now, when I begin a still life, uh, I will just kind of draw this in a little bit just to get it all in place. But then once I get that done, I'll start on the background and just blocking in some of the masses and the tones so that it kind of gets me mentally warmed up um, without really having to jump into anything too complicated to begin with. So I am going to start with just my nice dark, that's a really dark background, so I'm just going to use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I hope you can see all that. <laughs> Afternoon, Norm. 
So I'm just taking this, and there's really not a lot of atmosphere back here. So I'm going to keep it fairly quiet. Uh, my original layer here of um, color was it's just pretty thin, so I want that to be just kind of pushed back and more subdued. And I'm just using, this is just a size 6 brush. Sure, I could get a bigger one, but for now, I'm just kind of getting some color down just to help mask that in. Once you get this tone down back here, it starts to feel more like um, it's kind of coming together. So that, to me, really helps with creating the feeling of it being a finished product. And the sooner you can start to see your concept come to fruition, the sooner you can start to feel good about it. <laughs> um, so what I mean by concept is before you begin any painting, you have to have sort of an objective and a goal of what it is that you want to achieve. Um, a carpenter would never just go buy a bunch of boards and start hammering them together. You have to have a focus of where you want to go, sort of how you envision that canvas looking in the beginning excuse me, at the end. And um, so what I do is I will just sort of write things down. I might do a thumbnail sketch. As I look at my um, setup over here, I will kind of visualize. You've seen the little um, squares that, oh, <laughs> thank you, Jerry. The little squares that help you isolate, um, you know, your scene, the view catchers. So I do that with my still life too. And I'm framing it in, thinking about composition, and I will move little things if I need to, but my point is, is when developing a concept for this, it's more than just copying those objects. It's also um, creating a life, a little entity here for things to live in. It's um, transcending reality. I just got pinged on me. And... Um, Velasquez, is always, it was always said of him that he didn't just paint objects, but he painted the reality in which objects exist. And so I've always kind of kept that as a mantra in my studio because even in landscapes or whatever, it's not just a mere copying of objects, but rather um, creating your own little reality here, which I think is much more interesting than photorealist. All right, now as I come down here to this area, I have to keep checking because we've had uh, cell reception problems at the beginning, so I hope I don't lose you. If I do, just stay tuned. I'll be back on. <laughs> um, so as I move away from the center of interest, I'm going to kind of lighten this up a little bit and just kind of let more atmosphere flow back over this way because I want to keep all of the focus in here. So now I see, I'm looking at this wine glass, or martini glass, and I see a darker value back in here. So right now I'm moving to the center of interest right in here. And I'm going to spend most of my time here just focusing on this. If you're just tuning in, I had mentioned earlier that this egg, I'm going to, um, that one over there is a little bit different than the one that I have on here already because I did this last December. So I will just go with what I have on my canvas. I'm going to put a thin layer of my background value in this glass area. I don't want to put this paint too thick. If you've followed me in my videos, I was talking about how um, grapes are very much like this. Um, hey guys, thanks for joining. Grapes are like painting glass and water. You do a really thin layer of the color that you see underneath a glassy surface. And I know grapes don't have a really glassy surface, but they do have that skin with that dust layer on. And so I try to think about it in light of that, in that context. I just made a sound. I hope I'm good. <laughs> oh, thanks, Allie. So, um, also, looking at this glass, if I squint down at it, I don't see the edge of the rim in some of these places. So I'm just going to look for every opportunity I can to lose some of those edges. So painting this first layer of that 
background behind the glass really thin even though I still want the value to show up I know you probably can't see that well on there but um, I want the value to show up but I don't want a lot of paint same thing with down under here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up just a little bit lighter tone I'm going to take some white and a little yellow ochre and just if I squint down at that glass I can see passages where it's sort of a middle tone value and that is what I have here. I have, um, I took some of that white and yellow ochre, just mixing right into what I had. Squinting down at that, I'm seeing a passage like this. And I am painting this a little bit thicker, that whole lean paint with the thicker paint over it. That's what I have going on here. So by doing this, it starts to pick up on that reflection of the tabletop up on the glass because the glass is tipped so it's going to be picking up that bounce surface and then over here I have it coming down like that we have really bad rain today so I hope I don't um, lose reception <laughs> seems like when it starts to rain I, I, I lose it so over here I just added a little bit more white to this side because it's picking up some of the bounce light from that eggshell. Coming like that. I will be softening these edges too. I love painting glass. If you haven't tried painting glass, it's so cool. It just there's so many little variables in it that you can quickly take it and um, overwork it. So you have to keep it fresh. You're forced to squint and only see the essentials. And to me, I think that's really fun. So I'm just mixing up a little bit darker here because back behind this rim, I see a darker passage back in there. Just a little bit darker. It still has some of that lighter tone because it's picking up some of that light from my spotlight. Oh, I was going to talk about my setup. I just have this, like, my window's right here, but I have it blocked off with a big piece of cardboard, but not entirely. And then I have, um, these are those th that those um, protectors you put on a table that are sort of like felt. So I, I've taken them to my studio because I love that flat black. But if I wanted it a little bit lighter, I could turn it around and use the other side. So I have this flat black in here because it creates a strong contrast. And I have my spotlight. This is a tabletop, um, just a big stone slab. And I keep my still life props about eye level. They look interesting if you want to lower them or raise them, it doesn't matter. But for me, that's kind of just, I find that convenient because I can just flick my eye back and forth this way. Um, but I've done them lower and that's interesting too. And then I just have my spotlight. This is a daylight light bulb and it has these little flaps that I can adjust to direct the stream of light. And that's it. Okay, so back to this. Keeping my brush strokes, holding the brush very loose and long, it, um, it forces me to think in terms of pieces of paint. And if you've been following me, you know that I say little pieces of paint all the time, little, little pieces of paint like that. It's a very impressionistic um, way of painting. I don't, I don't do this kind of painting where it's, can you see that? It's just blending, like blending, blending. I would rather see um, little pieces of paint that blend with littler pieces of paint. I think that that makes a more interesting painting. Like that. And coming over here. So where this egg tucks under, it's really black back in there. And I'll kind of sculpt that out a little bit there. All right, almost to the fun part. I want to paint that egg. That's so fun. Years ago, I painted an egg, and um, I think I painted it twice just because I was having so much fun. Hi. <laughs> All right, cleaning my brush. I'm going to just get a smaller one so that I can kind of control what's going on in here. When I look at that egg yolk, I see the yolk, and then I see like a reflection of that yolk just above it. I'll show you what I mean on my finished painting. 
it's hard to see that from way over there, but so I have the the yolk like this, and then right up here is a reflection of this yolk on the surface of that albumin. So I'm gonna squint down and try to get that first, and then I'll paint the yellow albumin around that. And so when I look at that, it, it, my temptation is just to take beautiful, you know, cadmium yellow and paint it on, but in reality, there's some nice shadowing on either side because it is a ball. So I wanna, um, I'll just start with like a yellow ochre, maybe some of that darker mixture that I've been using just to create a shadowed side of the egg yolk. I, I put a little bit of burnt sienna in there. And I'm looking at this thinking it's, it's about in this area. That needs to be, I think, a little darker. If I don't add the burnt sienna and I just use the um, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, it'll turn greenish, and I really don't want it that green. So I'm gonna add some burnt sienna to tone it down. Scoop. I see a nice passage over here of this darker tone as it comes around and bumps up against the edge of that glass. Comes like that. Now I'm gonna take, I am gonna use some just pure clean cad yellow, maybe a little cadmium yellow uh, pale mixed into there. Oh, I got some yuck on my brush, so I'm gonna clean that. Right in this area here, keeping that really smooth and flat, letting these, um, this yellow sort of mix with this darker tone on the side comes around like that. And then some clean cad yellow pale with some light. I hope that you can see that. <laughs> Not a drinker, so what's the egg for? <laughs> the egg in the martini glass doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I've actually been asked that a couple times. Oh, what's that all about? Nothing. It was just fun. I, I like to paint stemware. I think it's really pretty and has a very elegant shape. Um, and then, of course, I like to paint eggs. So, that's all. <laughs> I, I have this, this funny little affection for eggs. Um, I always had a pet chicken growing up. Her name was Amelia. Um, actually, I've had several pets, but Amelia was a really cool chicken. She would come when I'd call her. You know, I'd like tap the ground and my chicken would come up to me. In fact, when I graduated high school and we get our senior pictures, I took Amelia with me and she was with me in some of the pictures. So. It's kind of funny. Okay, so there's that little reflected piece. I hope that you can see that. It's probably too far away. Um, all right, now, now, cleaning my brush off, I'm just gonna try to get some really clean, pure, bright um, yellow right in the middle. I'll take a little bit of white and cad yellow pale, and I'm just gonna mix just this really, just pure spot of bright white yellow like that. And I'm just painting the two colors together. If you saw how I did that, I take a scoop of one color, scoop another color, and I just paint the two colors together. Oh, you hate eggs? <laughs> okay, well, hey, thanks for the kind words anyway. So just laying that down right in the middle. It gives the feeling of um, the center of that egg coming out at us. I like that right there. I think I will take and add just a little, I look over there and I see just a little bit of a white right there. Okay, so I like that. All right, now the top of this egg yolk reflection, as it's bounced on the surface, I see a little bit darker tone right there. Oops, I want that darker. Maybe I'll use a little bit of that cadmium red that I had. Yeah, that looks good. Pushing that back. Okay, <laughs> having fun. Thanks for joining me, you guys. All right, now I'm gonna do this albumin on the sides. And I squint down there, and what I wanna do first is get that darker tone. Just like in painting glass or a tree trunk or anything, I start with a darker passage first, and then I'll move to medium and lighter tones. 
So in this, I squint and I see it's almost a greenish tint. I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the the mixture here that I have of the yellow, and I think I am going to add a little bit of the ultramarine blue and a little white. You can always try things. You know, um, I'm looking at that. That looks okay. What does it look like up here? It's too light. So I'm going to add a little darker green to that back in here. That looks about right. Getting that color spot on accurate is so interesting and fun. That's, this is the part that I love about painting eggs is getting that the color. Anytime I can have a, a, a challenge, I find that really fun. So there's a little line separating the yolk from that reflection. And I'm going to clean that up a little because I think that it's um, a little too separated. And then um, as I'm looking over here, I'm squinting at the still life there, I see that this passage as it comes up into this edge of the glass is picking up some of that bounce light. So I'm going to as it transitions, I'm just going to add a little bit more cadmium yellow to that. I hope you can see that. And it kind of reflects a little up the side of the glass, like this. And the same thing with this side over here. Especially with these glasses, what you do on one side, you should do on the other, if the light is traveling really direct like this. So I'm going to take some of that cad yellow pale with the white. And just come in through and add a little sparkle there and a little sparkle there and there okay so cleaning this passage up <laughs> in here and this is an area here where I can sort of soften an edge like that and um, I'll darken this area here too above the glass the egg thing right here that where that bounce up into that yeah fine okay so now um the sides here where the alveolin comes down around the yolk i'm seeing this coming like this like that on both sides and this is a really nice area here where I can soften and lose edges in this passage. And I'll hit it with a nice sharp accent right there. And then I have some little yellow streaky things underneath. I hope I'm not missing your comments, but I'm sure I am. So I will make sure to get them when I'm done. <laughs> okay. I'm kind of standing off to the side so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm going to step in front here and just clean some of this up real quick. I'm softening this edge where the yolk comes down. Like that. Hope I didn't step in front. Oh, thanks, Teresa. You like scrambled eggs? Thanks, Frank. <laughs> I like scrambled eggs, too. <laughs> With ketchup, because I'm Minnesotan, and that's how we do it. So like that. Okay, so I'm looking at this and I see it is not a straight line like that. Okay, like that. All right, so now as I start to kind of think about the stem of the glass, <laughs> see if the yolk would be on us. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. Yes, it would. Yolk's on you. <laughs> Okay, so um, let me just soften this edge too. The right, the, I wanted to talk about edges today too because um, as you look at your picture and I talked a little bit in the beginning about having a concept and where you want the viewer to travel through your painting. So when I'm looking at this, I think, well, I would like the viewer to enter obviously this way and then um, you can enjoy the chicken, but the, the purpose of the chicken is to direct the eye to this area. And so my use with the edges, hi Pamela, my use with the edges is to direct the viewer 
So if I were to put, you know, sharp edges back here and to make this egg yolk have a, re or egg have a really sharp edge, that I would go back there. And so I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to use like maybe a sharp edge down here and I'll enhance this highlight right here, keeping the eye in, oops, that's too big, but you know what I mean, just keeping the eye in this area. That way, you know, I'm not shooting you off the canvas. This passage here, I can look at that egg and see that it has a really sharp edge right here on the back, but if I painted it as sharp as I see it, then it's going to shoot the viewer off the canvas and we don't want them to leave. So that's, that's all part of the game, it's just keeping the viewer in here and letting them circle around and whatever. I, um, so that's, that's always on the back of my mind is how the viewer is going to look through the painting. And in that case, since I put this shadow up there that's too light, I'm going to soften that. I'm keeping my brush strokes loose and easy. Okay, so I'm going to get some tracks on here. <laughs> Hi, Joseph. Good to see you guys. I'm going to get some of this done here so that um, it, it looks like I actually did something today. <laughs> All right, moving forward. So I have a medium tone, just a middle tone value. It's almost like a gray. And um, I'm going to stand in front of it real quick just so I can get the stem perfectly straight down. Sorry if you can't see for a sec. All I'm doing is dragging my brush straight down. I've done this before where if I don't stand like perfectly straight and there, or my head's tipped and my whole glass and everything is tipped and it's kind of a, a disaster. Um, and then, all right, I hope I'm not standing in your way now. <laughs> oh, thank you, Emmanuel. All right, so as I'm looking at this stem, I'm seeing, I'm gonna clean up some of those sparkles that I put on just to demonstrate, quick, get rid of some of those. Like that. Cleaning up this passage. Really, I mean, all I pretty much am using all the time is the, um, these three colors. I, that's, I call them the Trinity, that's why I keep them close together here on the palette. Yellow ochre, burnt sand, and ultramarine blue. They're just, they're the, my go-to colors for everything. So cleaning this up. Just a little like that. And like that. And then that, by putting a darker passage back here, that will allow me um, places on the stem to completely lose that edge. And also, I'm going to lose the chicken's head to that background, too. Getting a little bit of oil every now and then because the paint kind of gets um, thin and difficult to work with. All right. So buckling down on the stem, I'm just getting some more of that gray. It's just sort of a warm gray. And it's... It would obviously be warm because it's picking up the bounced light from the egg and the tabletop. I'm going to keep my finger on the edge of my canvas so to help slide it down like this. Now, just like anything else, I start with the dark, go to a middle tone, and then I'll pop in some highlights. It just keeps things really a lot simpler to... Um, to work from that way out, outward. Because you can get overwhelmed. I found that when I was painting this before, the bottom of this glass down here was the most difficult part because there's so many little subtle nuances and um, that, that makes it difficult. So if you can squint and simplify and just look for dark, medium, and light and not worry about you know, what is that shape? What is that squiggle? What, you know, all that. Just keep it really, really vague. Like that. Oops. I need it warmer down here. Medium. Just pieces of paint. Medium color there. Like that. 
I think it's, see, because I'm not standing in front of it, it's kind of off to the side, so let me just get in front of it real quick. And then I can also um, fix the shape of it by going to the background here. When I look at that, too, in the background shadows, again, it's just the, the two colors, uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I'm going to add a little bit more yellow ochre into that with some of the white because I see it as it's lighter than the background back here. Maybe even a little more burnt sienna because it's a different um, metal or different, the surface is different altogether. Where are we going? Also, by um, adding some burnt sienna, I keep my color scheme to a primary pattern. This, uh, a lot of paintings stand on different color schemes. Um, some really successful, beautiful landscapes that I've seen are carried on the color patterns of a secondary color scheme with the orange, green, and purple. And that makes a really strong, beautiful painting. Very George Innes, uh, like sunsets. But um, you can also have a really strong painting based on the primary color scheme, the red, yellow, blue. Vermeer and Leonardo da Vinci did those that color pattern a lot. Mostly it was blue and yellow with just a touch of the red. And so in this case, I have blue and yellow with a little bit of the burnt sienna to give it that red warmth. This is getting too light, so I kind of want to push that back a little bit into dark back there. Kind of just laying in some of this tabletop color. Once I get some tabletop down, then it starts to feel like, ooh, the painting's getting done, it's coming towards me. Makes me happy. <laughs> I added a little bit more white and yellow to my gray. I think I'll add a little more burnt sienna. I look at that because as I start to get down here, it's getting a lot more light on it. Like that. As it comes down this way. I don't want to have a strong flood of light coming off the canvas over here because, again, it'll draw the eye off. I don't want to do that. And I'm also keeping my brush strokes horizontal to really make it feel like this is the surface of the table coming at us. And I'm adding more white and yellow to the surface here to really make it look like it's lit up like that. When I did this as a demo, I added, um, I was showing how to add a little bit of the um, broken color. I love using broken color in passages where you have a little bit of this color. In this case, I might take um, some alizarin crimson and I add little little dads just to create a little cool and warm vibrancy. A little bit of this. I don't know how much of that you can actually see on the video, but I will share these pictures afterwards. Or I try to. <laughs> All right, so I think that that's kind of starting to feel like a tabletop. And I'm not going to really push it too far there because I want to move on to other stuff. <laughs> okay, back to this. I kind of jump around, um, and I do that on purpose. When I, um, I'm working on a painting, I will jump around to create the feeling of unity. Not because I'm ADD, but because I think if I work on just this, and I get this till it's perfect, then it won't have that balance and connectivity to the background or to the chicken or whatever. So I, that is why I jump around. All right, so back to the glass. In order to make a sparkle really stand out, you want a darker passage right behind it. And this is what I was talking about or trying to talk about last week when I was out in the wind and the rain at the ocean. Um, I was demonstrating a wave painting and someone had wanted me to show how to do sparkles in the wave and I didn't have any. <laughs> there was like no sun and so I didn't, I don't know if I was able to help with that but this is the same concept here so I will be able to address it here. 
in the case of the sparkle on the wine glass and on the stem, you have to have a dark passage right near it, like this, in order to really make those sparkles zing. And it's the same thing with the wave, where the wave comes up and it's a thicker passage of that cresting wave where it's dark. You can really push that dark and pull out some of those emerald tones and then pop in your sparkles and they will really dance. Okay, so that looks fine. I have a little dark line going down the stem like that. Not all the way down. I don't have to go whoop, all the way down. And then a little bit darker in here and down here. I think that my stem is totally crooked because I'm not standing in front of it. But I'm sure you'll forgive me, I hope. <laughs> okay, so um, that looks a little better. Sorry if I'm right in front of it. I'm just cleaning this so that it has... Uh, a little bit more. <laughs> All right, adding a few sparkles so that I can kind of be done with the glass part. Starting at the top where the delicate little rim is, yeah, I will do this, um, this little tiny, like that, and a little one over here. And I have the smallest little over here, kind of. Oh, I drank too much coffee. <laughs> we'll eat that. That's good. Okay. I'm going to clean that up and make it a little bit smaller. You can do that. Just take your ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and shave it down. Like that. Good to enough. Oop. Didn't mean to do that. So let's do this. All right. <laughs> Where am I going? So, oh, great. <laughs> I, I get little pop-ups on there that let me know that um, you guys have shared it, shared the video, and I really appreciate that, so thank you. Um, all right, little sparkles here and there. And a zinger right there. It got lost. Um, you know, I'm seeing this yoke could be a little more like that. Okay, now I'll just do some of those little zingers down here on the stem. And that part there is going to be pretty much good for now. Remember that the, the purpose of this is to help direct the eye up. And right now that eggshell that I have up there is, um, <laughs> thanks Ray, it's a little, uh, it's not done. So I'm going to just slap on some paint there to, I don't want it drawing the eye more than it is right now. So I'm just going to take and put a little bit of paint there. Cleaning that, kind of getting some shadow egg color. And then the inside of an eggshell is, I've, I've seen them, they're a little bit um, kind of rosier. I don't know why, but they are. So I added a little bit of the burnt sienna to that. Eggshells are really fun to paint because there's so many little nuances. There's hard edges, soft edges, and um, you can really, you can study it for a long time. There's a lot in, involved in it. If you're into that. <laughs> All right, so that's just kind of a simple little eggshell. I'm going to do a little bit of a, the glass thing, the rim of the glass, to make it look like it's going back into there and call that one pretty much done. Good enough. Softening this edge back here because, like I said, I don't want the eye to go back there. And it's okay to just go like that with your brush because. It kind of connects the two a little bit. I'm sort of thinking about that. Softening this. All right. And then a little bit of this egg down here. I have um, kind of like this. 
Again, I'm just using the colors that I already have. I made that sort of a rosier tone with the burnt sienna, yellow ochre. I'm purposely not making this as white as I can because I will add a white highlight inside there and that I really want to stand out. Surprisingly, they're not as white as you think, eh? Eggshells. White's one of those colors that you could spend a long time studying um, the proper use of white. It's like a chef and water. It seems so obvious, but um, it can really be misused. All right, and so I put that shadow on the inside of that eggshell so that I can do the outside of the eggshell, getting some of this bright light right here. And I like to paint light going into a shadow rather than shadow coming into a light. I think it has more of a feel of um, the movement of light instead of the movement of shadow, if that makes any sense. I am asked that oftentimes to explain, what do you mean by that at my workshops? Because I say that often. And so the best way I can describe it is in, um, like you look at a tree branch and how the light wraps around it and light moves just by um, how, it, how it envelops an object. Light envelops an object rather than shadow. So just pushing that a little bit down there. All right, I think that that's reading like the other half of the eggshell. I'm just gonna take a little bit of pure white and just put, that's a little too much, like a little right in there. All right, getting closer. <laughs> I'm going to add some shadows back here. My napkin's getting gross. Um, and then I will push this back, keeping these shadows really quiet and subdued. I don't want to call a whole bunch of attention to this passage back in here because, again, that's one of those areas where it can really shoot the viewer off the canvas. So I don't want that. Okay, so I like that. passage there was kind of distracting. I will make it a little bit darker here just because I want to keep this like it's in a spotlight. Getting some paint on here. Yes, I could get a bigger brush, but whatever. It's what I had in my hand. Right. Okay, so um, I might do a little bit on the chicken. I thought it'd be kind of fun. <laughs> All right, throwing that one away, getting my next one, getting a drink. Okay, so the chicken. I did, I drew it already out, and um, I'm gonna take kind of a smaller brush. This is a size two flat, it's synthetic. And I, I like it because it's, it has a nice chiseled edge, so I will be able to get some of those darker, clean, crisp areas, and then just pop in a few highlights. So to do that, um, I'll just take some ultramarine blue, and I will add a little bit of burnt sienna to that just to really darken that passage if I need to. So looking at my chicken over there, just going to put in areas, I hope you can see that, where I have a really dark, dark blue. I'm going to work kind of fast on this because I don't think you're going to be able to see it very well. So laying in my darks like that and the chicken comes down. I looked all over these antique stores for this rooster. I thought it would be so cool to do this painting of an egg in a cocktail glass with a rooster. <laughs> so I found one and I liked that it was blue. And he looks so proud. Um, again, I'm just taking some more blue, mapping out where the shape is, getting this accurate. Boom, like that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that blue, like I just have some cobalt here, into the shadow here because I saw it there. I'm going to take and anchor him to the table a little bit because that needs to be there. 
And I love that the shadow was blue because the light's shining through the, the glass. Okay, back to the chicken. I'm still getting in my darks. I squint down at that and I can see that there are some passages in here. There's a nice dark like that. And remember, I, I purposely kept this value here close to the same value as on the chicken because I wanted this to not draw the eye as much as use it to help push the eye this way. All those little tricks that we do. <laughs> Oops, okay, so I'm gonna take some cobalt now. Just some nice cobalt, maybe a little white, because I'm gonna start getting some of these middle tones, and I see them better, the shade of blue better, if I add some white to it. So I have my mixture here. <laughs> oh, thanks for sharing, guys. I appreciate that. Um, oh, you know, I also, I just, I wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much <laughs> for all of your support um, in these. This morning I was going through and adding up um, my, my videos. I've done 38 videos and um, they've been viewed over 60,000 times. And I have some really exciting news that I can't wait to share. I'm going to be sharing it in the next few days. So stay tuned. And um, again, I just really appreciate everyone's support. It means a lot. All the likes, shares, views, comments. So thank you so much. I mean it. So anyway, um, I like where this chicken's going. I see, um, I'm, I'm allowing my brush to show directional form around the chicken, which whichever way the, the little body parts go, like this. Okay, so I've, I've almost completely obliterated any little highlights that I already had on there, which is fine, because I'll add those back in later. Okay, so I know you can't really see it, but I have done, I've mapped out the darks and the mediums. Now I'm going to go through with the highlights. Clean my brush off really well. Just taking some of these that I already had, and I'm making a nice thin mixture here. Looking for the key ones. I'm not going to add all of them that I see on that chicken, but just going to pop in a few little dingers where I see that they make sense. Even through here, like that. A little right there. Keeping these, they're not, these aren't super intense at this point, but I will go back through and um, add a few really bright ones. Um, there, 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 and then a few up this. Again, if I didn't have that background really dark on this chicken, those highlights wouldn't stand out as sparkle. They would just kind of look muddy. Um, all right, so getting a little brush, I have uh, just a liner, it's a number two. I'm gonna take just some white, roll it into a sharp little point, like that, just to pull in a few little sparkly notes. Always keeping in mind that I really uh, intend for these things to help direct the eye. All right, well, I could spend all day fiddling around with this, and I don't really want to do that, but um, I, think that, I think that that's kind of as far as I'm going to push it. I hope that this has been helpful and interesting, and I wanted to thank you guys so much for joining me, and have a wonderful weekend. Okay, bye-bye.